Hey guys, my name is Lin. I'm a registered nurse. Welcome back to my channel, Lin's Daily NCLEX. And this channel, I only focus on NCLEX style nursing questions and help you to go through all the nursing exams. I'm a two years old med surge nurse. I work in a general hospital. I work in the flow pool. So basically, every day I go to work, I got to flow to different med surge units. I flow to seizure epilepsy unit a couple times. In there, I can see so many different kinds of seizures. So today we are going to practice some seizures questions. The nurse is having an educational seminar in a senior community and the topic is seizures in the elderly. Which disease process should the nurse including in the cause of seizures? A. Parkinson's disease B. Alzheimer's disease C. Stroke or D. Brain's atrophy due to aging I know you can get it right, the answer is C. Seizures may occur after the stroke. And in this question, the three other options are all neurological diseases that occur over time, like Alzheimer disease, Parkinson's disease, and also brain ultrasound. It's the condition gradually getting worse. So all of those options can be eliminated as the cause of disease. So the next question, a nurse is preparing a young female patient with tonic chronic seizure disorder for discharge. Which instructors should the nurse, including a bound phenotoid, select all the apply? One, monitor for skin rash. Two, perform good oral hygiene. Or three, watch for ataxia. And four, watch for hesitism. Five, receive necessary periodic blood work. Or six, maintain adequate amounts of fibers and protein in the diet. If your answer is 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and 5 and you are right. Phenotoid is also called dilantin, might cause a mild rush. If the rush appears about 10 days to 2 weeks after starting the drug, the patient should notify the physician and stop taking the medication. There is a very common side effect for dilantin which is gingival hyperplasia. So option 2 is correct. Hesitism is excess growth of the hair in unusual area, especially in the jaw and then the neck. The patient is a young female, so she might really pay attention on her appearance. So as a nurse, you might want to remind her that. Dilantin dosage is highly individualized and requiring frequently monitoring. The patient should maintain a dilantin level between 10 to 20 microgram per milliliter. So we should close monitor the blood work to avoid toxicity. Although adequate fibers and the protein are part of the healthy diet, but they are not required for a patient taking dilantin. Hi, Bella again. I have another question for you. The nurse goes into a room and sees a male patient is sitting in a chair and his entire body is rigid with his arms and legs contracting and relaxing. The patient is not aware of what is going on. I need you to put the following in order. One, push aside any furniture. Two, ease the patient to the floor. Three, do a quick access to get his vital sign. Four, allow the patient to rest. The answer is two, one, three, and then four. Because the patient should not remain in the chair during a seizure, he should be brought safely to the floor so that he will have room to move his extremities. Then, 
Number one, the seizure patient needs to be protected from injury. Moving the furniture would help ensure the patient would not hit something accidentally. Then, number three, ask the patient if he has any RO while assessing him. And last, after he has a seizure, the patient will become very tired. If you do a very long and full neuro assessment, it will make him even more tired and propose harm to another seizure. Next question. A patient is receiving dilantin to control a seizure disorder and questions the nurse regarding the medications after discharge. The nurse's best response is 1. Prevents the occurrence of seizures. 2. Medications may be stopped if the seizure activity disappears. 3. Keep the medications on an empty stomach. Or 4. Will probably be continued for life. The answer is 4. Option 1 is wrong because seizures might still occur despite the drug therapy and then the dose might need to be addressed. Option 2 and option 4 are totally the opposite. So if the answer is not option 2, it must be option 4. Abscess of the seizures might probably result from the drug effectiveness. So the patient need to continue taking the medication. Option 3 is also wrong. Taking the anti-seizure drugs with food or snack or 6 to 8 ounces of water will help to minimize GI upset. So our next question is actually a math question. A lot of you guys heard about a math question, your heart beat just like this. Doo -doo, doo -doo, doo -doo. But don't worry about it. The more you practice, the more you are good at it. Question is, a nurse is preparing for administer dilantin to a patient with a seizure disorder. The order is for dilantin 50 mg per kilo per day to administer 3 times a day. The patient is now 110 pounds and how many milligrams of dilantin should be administered in the first dose? 1 kg equals 2.2 pounds and then the patient is 110 pounds. 110 divided by 2.2 equals 55 kg. And 55 kg times 50 micrograms per kilogram is 825 micrograms per day. But that's the whole day. The question was asked for a dose. So it's 825 microgram divided by three doses is 275 microgram per dose. Okay, the next question. A patient who has a history of seizures is scheduled for a stress test at 9 a.m. and he is EMPO before the test. Patient is also scheduled to receive an anticonvulsant medication at 8 a.m. What should the nurse do? 1. Administer medication with 6 ounces of water to minimize GI upset. 2. Skip this dose and double the next dose. 3. Keep the same dosage of the drug rectally. And 4. Ask the provider if this drug can be switched to IV form. Answer is number 4. You need to call the provider to switch to another form. To achieve the anticoagulation effort, the therapeutic blood level must be maintained. If the patient is NPO, the doctors need to be notified and switch to another form. So the option 1 says administer with 6 ounces of water. That is a lot of water. And then the patient right now is EMPO. A lot of times before the patients go to the surgery, they usually EMPO. We can give a very small amount of ice chip, but not 6 ounces of water. And option 2 is so wrong, I don't think I have to explain this one. And, and option 3 is also incorrect because we need a doctor's order to switch the medication route. So next question, which of the following is medication instructions or patient education points associated with carbamazepine? Option 1, avoid milk products or antacids. Option 2, avoid over contraceptives. Option 3, 
avoid insects. Option four, avoid grapefruit juice. The answer is number four. Since grapefruit juice prevent normal drug metabolism and increase serum level, do not administer gabamazepine with grapefruit juice. It increases the amount of gabamazepine to toxic plasma level. And remember, not just grapefruit juice, other related citrus fruits like orange juice or pomegranate juice need to be avoided with gabamazepine. So the next question, a teacher was talking about a kid in her class who was always suddenly staring at something with a brief loss of consciousness. The teacher said that the kid could always pick up where she let off. You as the school nurse, you know that this kid might have 1. Absent seizure, 2. Chronic seizure, 3. A tonic seizure, and 4. Tonic chronic seizure. The answer is option one, absent seizure. What the teacher say is the perfect description for absent seizure. And option two, chronic seizure is a repetitive, uh, rhythmic jerky movement of the head or the limbs. And option three, a tonic seizure is loss of muscle tones in head or the limbs. It can cause a fall if you are standing. A tonic seizure also called drop attack. The patients can drop heavily on the floor, so the patient should always wear a helmet. Because a tonic seizure are short, afterwards, patients can usually carry on what they were doing. And option four is the grand more seizures we always talking about. It's loss of consciousness, rigid muscles, and the whole body convalescence. It can cause a fall if you are standing. Okay, next question. A puberty girl with a seizure disorder controlled with dilantin and gabamazepin asked the nurse about getting married and having children. Which of the following response by the nurse would be most appropriate? So let all the apply. 1. During your pregnancy, you need to follow your doctor very closely because the hormones change. Two. When you decide to have children, talk to your doctor about changing your medication. Option 3. You should stop taking your seizure medications during your pregnancy. Option 4. You probably shouldn't consider having children until your seizures are fully cured. Option 5. Women who have seizures disorders commonly have a difficulty time conceiving. Option 1 is correct. Because during pregnancy, women's metabolism increase, they may need to increase the dose of those medications. Option 2 is also correct. Because dilantin is a teratogenic agent, cause some of the fatal problem. So when the girl thinks she is ready to have a baby, she should talk to her doctor about changing the medication. Option 3 says you should stop taking your seizure medications during your pregnancy. That is very wrong. Certain seizure medications can pose a risk to the development of a baby, such as dilantin. However, not taking seizure medication can result in a serious problem for the health of both mother and baby. So the good advice is continue taking the seizure medication. Option 4 is wrong. Seizures can be controlled but cannot be cured. Option 5 is also wrong. Seizure disorders and infertilities are not related. And that is it for today's seizures NCLEX question practice. And remember, I also have other NCLEX style practice questions. A card will pop up in here or here. I will see you next time. Bye.